Well, thirdly, not only is Christ the perfect prophet and he's the perfect judge, but he's also the perfect king. If you look at verse 14 of Zephaniah 3, it says, Sing, O daughter of Zion, shout, O Israel, be glad and rejoice with all your heart, O daughter of Zion, or O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away your judgments. He has cast out your enemy, the king of Israel. The Lord is in your midst. Who is he? He's the king. He's the perfect ruler. He's not just a, a vassal king. He's not just a surrogate king. He's not just a short term. He is the king, and he comes into our midst as king. And he wants to reign in, with undisputed sway in our heart as we surrender it to him. And look what happens when this takes place. It says, the king, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall see disaster no more. Verse 16, in that day it shall be said in Jerusalem, don't fear, Zion, let not your hands be weak. The Lord is in your midst. The mighty one will save you. We will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. Isn't that beautiful? Verse 17. You know what that speaks to me about? How when Christ comes, the song begins in our heart. You know, a lot of people, their song is, they haven't had a song in their heart ever. They're empty, they're lonely, they're sad, they're guilty. But when Christ comes, he opens our hearts. Luke 24, I want to read to you, 45 to 53, because in the New Testament, the perfect king comes to some people that lost their song. I mean, they're dejected, they're walking, they're stumbling home from Jerusalem. They're going to Emmaus, and they're, they're crestfallen. They didn't even stop at the tomb. That wasn't in their plans, any resurrection. Jesus was gone, and they were so dejected, the, it, it was probably Cleopas and Cleopas' wife, uh, Mary. And, and so those two were trudging home, and Jesus opened their understanding that they might comprehend the Scripture. And he said, Thus it is written... It was necessary for Christ to suffer, to rise from the dead the third day, that repentance and remissions of sin should be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And your witnesses, and behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. Tarry in the city of Jerusalem till you're endued with power from on high. And the disciples, listening to him say this, followed him, and he led them out to Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. And it came to pass, while he blessed them, he parted from them and was carried up into heaven. Now listen what happens when Christ is a perfect king within us. And they worshipped him. They returned to Jerusalem filled with joy. And they were continually in the temple praising and blessing God. They got their song back. Why? They, they found their king. They acknowledged their king. And what he's saying right here in this beautiful Old Testament prophet, Christ is the king. And he's saying, daughter of Zion, shout, O Israel, be glad and rejoice. Verse 14. He says, I am in your midst. I am the mighty one. I am your king. And if you'll submit to me, you will get your song back. And what a joy. It's always a joy for me to see Christians that have been in the far country and they come back to the Lord and they get their song back and they get filled with joy and they get filled to overflowing. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. 